be it. I'm doing good. He has no opening statement, so fire away. <laughs> Horn, uh, just how would you evaluate how the offensive line played on Saturday against Florida? You know, I think we played very physical. You know, I think we ended up with two, two hundred something yards. I can't remember the exact number, but I think we came out and played very physical. And, you know, they were bigger up front, so we had to. You know, it was a tougher game for us to move them off the line and stuff like that. Warren, speaking of which, when, when Kenny McIntosh had that phone, but then he came back and just ran like a ran like a crazy man. What did that do to fire you guys up up front? Oh yeah, it always fires us up. Um, you know, when our running backs are running through people like that, you know, especially for Kenny. You know, last week I remember last week they asked me about. Uh, Kendall and Dejon running through people, and I was like, nah, you got to uh, think about Kenny too. He'll run through somebody too, and then for him to come out and just do that over and over again, you know, it hypes us up. Warren, how important is it to uh, control the offensive line this game versus Tennessee with such a potent offense on the other side of the ball? You know, you know, having an efficient run game, you know, not putting our defense back out there, you know, not having three and outs, you know, that's always the goal, you know, eat with whatever team we're playing. So just having an efficient run game. You know, be able to control the line of scrimmage and stuff like that. Warren, Tennessee has been really good on defense as far as stopping the run. Just what does that challenge present going up against that defensive line this week? You no, know, it's always a challenge. You know, any team we play in the SEC, it's always a challenge. You know, their defensive line is always pretty good. And, you know, just going into this week, just, you know, watching film and seeing what they do, their tendencies and stuff like that. and figuring out the best way to attack him. Another, another Tennessee offensive question, part of the tempo that they work with, they run with, how different is that, unique is that to what y'all seen so far this year? Or have or if you firstly played against since you've been in Georgia? Oh yeah, you know, you know, for me personally, you know, we don't go against that type right, right, of right. speed, but just seeing it in person, they move pretty fast, and, you know. Yeah, I think I don't know the exact number, but they're you know they're getting a playoff in almost every ten seconds. So that type of speed, you know, conditioning this week is going to be a big part for us. You know, making sure everybody's you know ready to go and conditioned. <coughs> Warren, just off the top of my head, it seems like Stetson hadn't been pressured very much over the last few weeks. Just how much do you think y'all have grown in terms of pass protection over the past you know month or so? Oh yeah, you know, especially in the beginning of the season, we weren't you know um, protecting them as well as we needed to, and know uh, we had to you know go back and look at ourselves and say that, you know, that's not the offensive line that we want to be and we have to protect them, you know, in order for our offense to, you know, head in the right direction. So we've been taking a lot of pride in that and then working on it in practice and straining. Well, I know it's just an, another game on the schedule, but it is number one versus number two in Athens. It's mm -hmm. going to be an incredible crowd. I mean, have you thought about what this environment's going to be like this weekend? Oh, it's going to be crazy, you know. I'm thinking back to, you know, the Arkansas game last year, the Kentucky game, but maybe even back to my freshman year, the Notre Dame game, how the crowd was, you know. And I'm expecting, you know, the fans to be full for and, you know. It's going to be a fun game. I'm looking forward to it. Kirby tweeted out yesterday, if you can't talk by the time you leave, you haven't yelled enough. How did the fans impact the game outcome overall? Oh, yeah, you know, especially when the offense, when their offense is out there, for them to communicate, you know, if the fans are going crazy, it's hard to, you know, hear. You know, sometimes you'll be sitting there, you can't hear the guy next to you talking. So the fans definitely play a huge part in that. Those games that you mentioned, uh, Arkansas against Kentucky and Notre Dame, when you're like, uh, you know, at your team hotel, going through your normal pregame uh, routine, or just like, when do you notice a difference that like something crazy is going on outside that the people are really geared up for this one? You know, probably when we go to pregame meal because we have a huge glass wall over there at the Georgia Center right there by our, uh, where we have pregame meal. So you see everybody tailgating and stuff like that. And, you know, especially when we walk to the buses to get on to go to the stadium, that's when we really see it. Any more questions for Warren? This uh, this rivalry, well, I guess it will be a rivalry now because it's been so one-sided um, in recent years that Tennessee hasn't been what Tennessee has been. I'm telling people that the SEC is better and the East is better when Tennessee is good. Talk a little bit about that between these two teams and the fact that so much is on the line and the fact that it makes a big premium on beating Tennessee. 
Oh yeah, you know, you know, in the East we always want to go undefeated. You know, we want we want to be um, dominant when it comes to the East, and you know, Tennessee's they're doing really well this year, and so it's going to be a good game. And well, can you repeat your question? I'm sorry, I got lost. Man. But just just the fact that it's got a big spotlight on this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the next game. You know, we're going to take it. You know, like this, like it's the next game, and they're a good team. You know, we're going to practice and go and watch film and see what we can do to come out, you know, on top. Is it harder for a guy your size to try to get on a loose ball when Kenny comes yeah. like that to get from uh, where you are to, you know, versus some of those little guys that can scoot? Yeah, you know, in practice, we, we've done the fumble recovery drill, but it's just different in the game. You know, things are happening way faster. And, you know, I thought I had it, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just curious. I mean, obviously, he plays on the defensive side of the ball, but what have you seen out of Jermon Dumas Johnson this year, especially as he's become a more vocal leader for this defense? Oh, yeah, he's definitely stepped up, you know, huge for our defense. You know, he's becoming more of a vocal leader. You know, he's leading by example, and then he's demanding, you know, excellence from, you know, all the defenders and just offense, too. You know, at practice, he's pushing us. When we do like team run and stuff like that, you know, he's coming in 110 percent. Uh, going back to the Saturday's game, obviously two uncharacteristic turnovers early in that th third quarter got him back in the game. What was the talk on the sideline and in the huddle just to bounce back and score the next drive? You know, just staying focused. You know, staying composed. You know, things didn't go our way those back-to-back -back turnovers, and so you know, just staying composed and you know, keeping our heads straight and getting back to work. Uh, again, back to Saturday. What's it like going to go, going up against a former teammate in Brandon Cox? You know, it's always good to see Brandon. You know, even though he chose to leave here and go to Florida, but you know, he's a good player, and it was it was fun going against him again. Any more for Warren? All right, thank you. Thank you, Warren.